Hello everyone and welcome to another incredible game from Charge of Masters. It is Vladimir Fedosev versus Ivan Zemlyansky. Now I don't know if uh, many of you have heard of Ivan. Uh, this is the first time I've ever heard of him. I've uh, been watching his progress uh, throughout the entire event and in the end uh, well, I was absolutely amazed that uh, a, a, someone w with a, with a, with the title of Fide Master can compete so well, uh, you know, uh, in, in the Shark Tank amongst uh, all of these grandmasters. And this is one game I decided to show you. All of his games are really incredible. Uh, it's against uh, a 2700 player, Vladimir Fedosev, who is absolutely incredible, can defeat anyone, and here uh, Ivan faces him with the black pieces. Now we are going to discuss uh, his progress throughout uh, the entire uh, nine rounds of the tournament and also his final standings, uh, but let's uh, check out the game first and then you guys will have a, a closer idea of what I'm what I'm talking about. So he is 2500, he does have the rating of a Grandmaster, I guess he just um, never... Uh, uh, competed that much or he just doesn't have enough events he, he hasn't won um, uh, three norms that are required for a grandmaster title or even an international master title because I've checked like his rating progress in 2019 he was already he was still rated like 1800 maybe 18 uh, below 1900 so I mean his rating progress is absolutely amazing and and he's 14 years old uh, so yeah, let's check it out. Uh, Vladimir with the white piece opens with d4. We have knight to f6, knight to f3, g6, and now g3. And when you see this setup against the 2700 player, uh, well, I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm scared of this setup uh, against any player. So uh, bishop to g7, we have bishop to g2, uh, and pawn to d5. Uh, sort of transposing into the the Catlin, the the pseudo Catlin. We have castles, castles, and pawn to a4. We have pawn to c5 and d captures on c5. So knight a6, trying to recapture the pawn this way, uh, and knight to c3. Knight captures on c5, and there is a game that reached this exact same position. That Richard Rapport had it against David Paravian last year in the World Rapid Championship. Uh, Rapport played a5 right away, and their game ended in a draw. Uh, but here we have bishop to e3 by uh, Vladimir, and it is now as of move 9 that we have a completely new game. So let's see, pawn to b6, okay, very nicely done, preparing bishop to b7 or bishop to a6, we have pawn to a5 and bishop to b7. Uh, rook a3, uh, or you play bishop to d4, you want to counter that dark square bishop somehow, uh, this way you're getting the rook off of that nasty a1 square, uh, and also it's uh, a, a lot more useful on, on the third rank, plus you can prepare queen to a2 to, uh, get, to double up on the on the a file, and maybe even play some like uh, queen a2, rook to a1, and triple up on the a file so when you finally capture a capture some b6 you will have uh, all the uh you know artillery needed and ready so queen to c8 now uh getting the queen off of the d file preparing rook to d8 and now queen to a1 we have knight f to e4 and knight captures on e4 we have knight captures on e4 uh, and pawn to c3 limiting the power of the bishop um, uh, on g7 we have queen to c7 now doubling uh well con connecting rooks preparing to bring the rook into the game uh, and pawn to a6 so here uh, vladimir says all right i'm 2700 uh, i'm just gonna complicate and uh, destroy you so let's see what happens bishop to c6 we have knight d4 again going after the bishop and even uh, continues uh, protecting his bishop pair bishop to d7 and queen to a2 now putting pressure on the undefended d5 pawn and you can't really defend with knight f6 because then the bishop also will be attacking the pawn here so what you can do here is bishop captures on d4 it is the top move recommended by the engine and it is really amazing that uh, uh well someone would uh, willingly give up their their dragon like this with bishop captures on d4 he now says all right uh, you're welcome to try and exploit these dark square weaknesses around my king uh, bishop to e6, just defending the d, d5 pawn. Uh, we have pawn to c4, uh, another excellent move by Vladimir, uh, weakening the knight on e4, undermining it. We have rook f to d8, uh, and now pawn to b3. A little bit weird not advancing the pawn all the way to b4, but okay, pawn to b3. Uh, rook a to c8 and now pawn to e3 and here we have knight back to f6 uh, also possible is queen to d7 just going after bishop to h3 right away but uh, even first prepares at knight to f6 we have queen to b2 now pressuring the knight and d captures on c4 
So what is uh, what is happening here? Of course, you don't have time for bishop captures. If you capture on f6, then e captures, and if queen captures, uh, then c captures on b3, and you just have a pass pawn on b3. I mean, th there's nothing the white the white queen can do alone around the black king. So instead, b captures on c4, and now queen to d7, just preparing a nice uh, bishop to h3, and here we have bishop. Uh, uh, to, 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 uh, sorry, here after queen to d7, we have bishop to d7, bishop to b7, attacking the rook. Uh, but here, many moves were possible. Now, you could actually consider bishop captures on f6, or you could, uh, whenever you have a pawn advanced like this, all the way to a6, uh, you could even consider sacrificing the bishop. Let's say you, you bring the rook into the attack, uh, bishop captures on c4, and bishop captures on b6. Uh, maybe a bit premature, maybe bishop to b7 first, uh, but it's very close to actually working. There's this little problem of captures, captures a7, and look at this, it seems like you're uh, you're gonna get away with it, but now bishop to d5, and once you bring a queen into the game, bishop captures, rook captures on a8, and now after uh, queen to d1 with check, which is the move that ruins all of your plans, rook captures, rook captures with check, and now after bishop to f1, you will take the rook on a8, and you have two rooks for a queen, but also white's position is just really, really bad. You don't have time to capture the pawn because then rook a1 goes after the bishop. So you have to unpin and then after, let's say, rook a to a1, you will move the bishop. But now rook to b1 attacks the queen, defends your b pawn. Now you will start advancing it. And it is black who is objectively winning here and will, will be pushing. So while it is possible, uh, you, you, you have to prepare it very nicely. Uh, instead, bishop to b7 was played, probably going uh, at at this whole idea, but through a different move order. But now rook captures on c4, and now rook a to a1. Uh, of course, now if you go rook f to a1, it's not uh, not as potent uh, because well, black is just in uh, t time to prepare for anything. He can go bishop to h3 right away. Uh, you can bring the the knight into the game via knight to e8. So. Uh, ma many possibilities here, like knight e8, and if you capture on b6 now, a captures and a7, the bishop on b7 is hanging. Also, there's the, the problem of that. So you, you want to place it there at some point, just uh, not, uh, not at the points that we've discussed. So rook a to a1 first, and now we have bishop to h3. Now you have to be really careful. The bishop here is very nice, but you are down a pawn. If you can't... Um, and make what's what of that uh, of that the pawn sacrifice is going to be very hard rook f to d1 but now pawn to e5 look at this beautiful move by ivan and now comes uh, uh, the the idea behind the pawn sacrifice and c4 queen b3 uh, now the queen attacks the rook and you have to move it uh, of course, if you, if you play bishop captures on e5, the queen just captures the rook. That's the point. And if rook captures, rook captures will be checkmate, uh, in case you were wondering. So after e5, queen b3 attacks the rook on, uh, on c4, and now queen to e6. Another very, very strong move. Bishop back to b2, and now rook captures on d1. And you have to capture with the queen. If you capture with the rook, uh, if you capture with the rook, then you run into this very nasty rook d4. You try to trade queens for a checkmate on d1, and if the queen moves, then you bring the queen to c4. Again, you try to give up the queen for rook captures on d1. And if queen to b1, well, now you just control too much space. You, you, you defend the pawn, you attack the bishop. Black's position is just beautiful here. Even if you have nothing more, you, you're up an extra pawn, a clean pawn, and you will be pushing for the win. So instead, queen captures on d1, and now pawn to h5, creating some breathing room for the black king. Queen to d3, attacking the rook, so you have to be careful. Rook to b4 attacks the bishop, and the bishop to c3. We have rook to b3, and now rook to c1 defending, and king to h7. Just getting the king off of the back rank, so you don't have to worry about tricky stuff like queen d8, maybe. Uh, we have queen to d1, uh, and now rook again back to b5. You don't want it to be a target here. Rook b5, we have bishop to a1. Uh, and now rook to c5. And this is where uh, even really puts the pressure on uh, on Vladimir because you cannot avoid a rook trade. If, for example, if you play rook b1, then queen a2. Again, what do you play? 
uh, let's say queen to e1, you, you bring the rook in, rook to c2 with some nasty threats of rook captures on f2, and then if queen captures, queen captures on b1, basically all, all of the all of the mate threats are still here because this bishop is just too powerful. So after rook c5, rook captures on c5 was played, and now just b captures on c5. And now, okay, it's not much, but you have you do have a passed c pawn to push forward. Uh, queen c1 going after the passed pawn, queen d6, just nicely defending. We have pawn to f3, uh, and now bishop to e6. Also very strong was bishop uh, was pawn to e4. Idea being that now, after let's say f captures on e4, you can play queen to e6, and you have very nasty threats here with queen a2, queen to g2 checkmate. So this double pawn structure uh, is doing white no favor. So after this pawn to f3 move, bishop to e6, and now uh, we have pawn to e4. Uh, of course, uh, Vladimir figures that uh, e4 will be a huge threat, so he might as well play it uh, himself. Uh, but by playing e4, he really uh, puts both of his bishops out of the game. Now, this bishop is, well, not very useful, and this bishop, unless it can capture on e5, also not very useful. So pawn to c4, even starts advancing forward, we have king to f2, knight to d7, of course you want to play f6 to make your pawn here uh, safe, and then you can move the queen and the knight freely. King back to g2, uh, and now knight to c5. We have bishop to c3, uh, knight to d3. So even has all the time in the world to uh, improve the position of his pieces as much as possible, as uh, Vladimir has no, no other option but to wait and see what happens. Queen to d2, we have pawn to h4, uh, and now g captures on h4. And here, uh, queen to c5 was played, but, uh, you know, uh, they had very little time here, even was below the one minute mark, and uh, Vladimir was below the three minute mark, but you guys are comfortable as usual, you know, watching nice chess videos on YouTube. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the cleanest way to win this with black while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, finding this beauty. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, it is not queen c5 that was played, but rather knight to f4 check. And now the reason is the king can never come to g3. If the king comes to g3, then you just trade and after bishop captures c3. The, the pawn cannot be captured because knight e2 check picks up the bishop. You can't go to c1 because again knight to e2 picks up the bishop. So you can go to e1 or e3, but it doesn't matter. c2 and now after king f2, you just give a check and the queening square is covered. You win the piece and of course easily winning. So what you would have to do after knight f4 check is not go to g3, but rather go to, well, g1 runs into queen b6 with check. So you might as well go to h1. But now again, queen b6. And now look at this, queen b1 check and you don't have g2. That's a huge problem. Uh, but on the other hand, okay, you can still block with the queen. You can't really move the queen to the back rank because then you allow queen to f2 to g2. So there's nothing here. Like you can block with bishop to b4, but now bishop to h3 with bishop to g2 check and that's it, game over. So yeah, I was in the position, but okay, uh, pretty tricky stuff. Uh, queen to c5 was played, but still, okay, uh, less than a minute on the clock, but still uh, objectively winning for Ivan. Pawn to h3, uh, seems like uh, Vladimir is now out of the woods, but not really. Bishop captures on h3. And now again, you can't capture it. If you capture, you allow queen to g1, and that's all there is. Uh, you, you can't really avoid knight f2 check, that will win the white queen. And on the other hand, if you avoid it like this, then knight f4 check, again, uh, attacks, and this will just be checkmate. So after bishop captures on h3, king to h2 was played, and now bishop back to e6, and queen to e2. Uh, we have queen back to e7 going after the h4 pawn, king to g3, and now queen back to a3. Attacking the bishop, uh, we have queen to d2, and now queen to c5, and the king to h2. We know what happens if the king is on g3, knight to f4, and queen to e1. Uh, waiting, just waiting to see what will happen. Uh, we have pawn to f6 and now bishop to d2. But now everything is set in motion. Queen to a3 goes after the f3 pawn. And it doesn't really matter how you defend it. Queen to e3 is okay, but then it runs into queen to b2, uh, nicely aligning with the king and then preparing c3. So king to g3 was played, but now of course we all know what happens if the king lands on g3. 
pawn to c3. That's it. That's what even played, and now there's really nothing you can do. Capturing just runs into a, a temporary queen sacrifice, because after queen captures knight e2 check, and then you uh, recapture, you're up a full piece, of course, completely winning. So in the game, bishop to e3 was played, but now queen to b2. Again, threatening mate in one, so queen to f2 was played, and now pawn to c2, and he was in this position. On move 54, that Vladimir Fedosev resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So a true masterclass by by 14 year old Ivan Zemlyansky against a, a 2700 player uh, Ivan Fedosev. Really brilliant, brilliant stuff here. He did sacrifice the pawn for this bishop b7, a pawn to a6 setup, but uh, as you've seen, not a lot to, to, to work with there. And here you resign, of course, because uh, whatever you play, let's say play queen to d2, you bring a queen into the game. And that's it. You have to give up a queen. If, if you capture this queen, you're just down a queen. And if you capture this queen, of course, it's still mate in one. So yeah, uh, beautiful stuff by, by Ivan Zemlyansky. Uh, like I've promised, here are the, the standings. Uh, not just the standings. Here are the opponents he faced in this tournament because he wasn't just uh, exemplary in this one game. You can see over the course of nine uh, of uh, 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 battling out uh, nine grandmasters, he, he faced some very strong grandmasters like Leon Luke Mendonka, Mish uh, Manu Mishra, Vladimir Fedosev, Aditya Mittal. Okay, he lost to Yu Yang Yi, but then he def uh, a draw with one. Uh, he defeated Abhijit Gupta and the uh, first uh, two rounds were drawn uh, with Benjamin Gladura and Tamas Ganush, uh, but yeah, in the end, six out of nine, and that places him, uh, sorry, not that, that places him, uh, as you can see, in some very, very elite uh, uh, company, uh, okay, six and a half points, Samuel Shankland, uh, Shamsin Invokidov, Barida Daneshwar, and Volodar Murzin, also Volodar, incredibly impressive, he's a bit older, 17 years old, but still crushing everyone, and then with six points, Yuan Yi, Alexis Arana, Parham Maksudu, Amin Tabatabai, Arjun, Eric Aisi, Aydin Suleimanli, Abimanyu Mishra, and Ivan Zemlyansky. So yeah, I mean, finishing uh, a top level event like this uh, with the same amount of points as Arjun Erigaisi, I mean, yeah, definitely uh, uh, spectacular stuff. And you can see he's the only non-grand master in the field, uh, in, in the top 15. There aren't even international masters there. So yeah, his Fide Master title, I believe, will not remain for long. But uh, yeah, I wanted to share a game with you as, as uh, you know, as he still is a Fide Master. Next video I make, uh, you know, on uh, uh, on Ivan Zemlyansky, he will probably he will probably skip the international master title. He'll probably already just be a grandmaster. So yeah, just to, to keep you guys informed. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any other uh, games that you would like uh, shown from Shadrach Masters, do use hashtag suggestion. If not, we are uh, shifting our attention uh, elsewhere as there are many, many uh, e events happening worldwide. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Richard Knapp, uh, Cameron Mascari, Gil Concavas, uh, Doc Peng Su, uh, and Scott Madison for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. And I fixed the camera. It's no longer, you know, going anywhere. Uh, so there's that. See you soon.